folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at question 1094, carpooling. The way we'll be approaching this problem is by creating an array of size uh, 1001. And the reason why we'll be doing that is because that is the maximum uh, from destination that you can have. And we'll keep a track of how many passengers are getting on and off. Um, so let's walk through examples, right? So this is uh, the first example that we have right here. We are creating an area of size seven here. And the reason why is because the maximum is des destination seven, but in our case, uh, for the actual problem, you would have to create something of size greater. So when you're walking through uh, the, the trips, what you're doing is that you look at individual trips and you'll say, hey, you know what? You're picking up two passengers at index one and you're dropping two of them off at five. So what you're doing is you're just adding two and dropping, you're doing minus two at five. Simple, right? And then what you're doing is you're looking at the second trip and you're saying, hey, you know what? You're picking up three passengers at the third index and you're dropping them off at index seven. So minus seven, minus three, sorry. So once you have this area ready, what you're going to do is you're going to check if at any point the capacity is uh, exceeded. So you come here, you see two, you come here, you see three, and that's five already. So you know that this trip is not possible and you return false. So you would just add and check, oh, hey, it's not possible and you return it. Simple, right? So let, let's look at the second example. The second example is the same, uh, same numbers, but the capacity is five. So in this case, it works, right? So you have two and then you have three that adds up to five. And then you have negative two, so that becomes back to three again, and you have negative three back to zero again. So in this case, you see that the capacity works and all of these trips work. So looking at these two examples and looking at the logic that we've worked through, this problem is relatively simple to solve. So let's code it up. Let's call it all stops, and let's create it to be of size 1001. So let's do a for loop where you go through all of the trips at rear IP and then here IPS and then what you what you're doing is you're assigning a trip of one you're incrementing it by the number of passengers which is at the zero at index of a given array and you're decrementing trips of two um oh not trips trip just the just the given trip, you need incrementing that by the number of passengers because that's where they get off. Awesome. So at this point, we have the array ready, and all you have to do right now is compute. So let's go through all of the elements in the array. So we have a for loop for that. And in this case, what you're doing. So there are a couple of ways of doing the next part. You can keep a temporary integer that keeps a track of um, the capacity, and you keep checking that whether it's less than the given capacity. However, it could fall to negative. So if you want to avoid that, you can just keep it simple by just checking the capacity and not having any variables. So let's say if you just have capacity and then you keep decrementing that by something that we have seen. Uh, so this is, yeah, all stops of zero. So what would that look like, right? So if you keep decrementing the capacity, in this case, we have the original capacity is four, and then you come here, you subtract two, right? Uh, subtract two, and here you subtract three, and you've already, you're already below zero. So anytime it's below zero, you know you can return false. So the other check that you would add is that whether the capacity is greater than or equal to zero, and you would check the same as the return condition. Return capacity is greater than or equal to zero. And in this case, like let's look at an example that's actually true, right? So you have two, uh, so the capacity is five, and then you have two, you're subtracting two, you have three, and then you come here, you have, um, uh, you have zero, which is still fine because our condition still holds, it's greater than or equal to zero. And then you subtract two, which means subtract, subtract minus, uh, subtract minus two, which means you're adding two. So you have a capacity of three at this point. So this still works. So that's the reason why uh, we subtract it instead of just like adding it or keep 
keep another temporary variable. You can just make do with the variable that we have right now. Uh, so let's run this and see if it's okay. The first test case passes. Everything else passes as well. That's awesome. So let's look at the space and the time complexity, right? The time complexity of the entire solution is O of n, where n is the size, uh, is the number of trips, uh, the size of the, the trips array. And then the space complexity is O of 1. And the reason why I say that is because it is of a given size. Like it doesn't, um, like it doesn't vary depending on the, uh, on the size of the input array. So that's the reason why it's O of 1. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much for uh, taking a look at the solution. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like, and let me know if there are any questions that you want me to solve. I'd be happy to solve them for you. And if there are questions, please leave, the, leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll get to them as soon as possible. Awesome. Have a nice day. Bye.